yesterday we were subjected to a very shocking uh, incident that involves um, uh, one of our colleagues, the former Minister of Mines, Honorable Richard Nsupo, who whose uh, property in Chiravombo was illegally searched. Illegally searched because uh, at the time that uh, that activity was being undertaken, some of us wanted to verify and establish the legality of that exercise. After examining the documents and the, the manner in which the search was conducted, clearly the purported state agencies or indeed officials purporting to come from there went to conduct a criminal activity at the residence of Honorable Musoku. And it is very unfortunate. That is clear uh, trespass or invasion of uh, somebody's privacy. But what is laughable is that uh, it looks like the UPND under the leadership of Misaka and they are really determined to inculcate a mentality in this country among the citizens that promotes poverty other than prosperity. It looks like under the UPND, all the citizens of the Republic of Zambia are sentenced to lack other than them having um, the dividends or indeed the benefit of hard work. The property that they have seized is a property that all of us know and the people of Chiriraomba and Copper Belt know that Honorable Musukwa built that house many years ago when he was just you know, serving as one of the union leaders among the union organizations for the mines. Beyond that, we know Honorable Musukwa having been an entrepreneur on the Copper Belt, a successful entrepreneur. His track record in terms of business is known by all. Actually, you can get the entire Chitirabombo to come and testify on his behalf in terms of how he has been able to make the bit that he has for his family and his children. What is shocking is that uh, those officers went with a blank illegal document calling it a search warrant without specifying what they were looking for and they began to now record in at that uh, premise whatever they saw as something that they could include as uh, one of the things they should be able to see. There is no such a, <laughs> a, a search that legally is conducted in that manner. What is expected is that if people have investigated or are investigating a matter, they would come with specific issues that they want to, they are looking for. And if they find them, they seize those things because possibly they are attached to a particular crime. Now they have seized this house. He built many years before he even became, <laughs> he became a politician, was still member of parliament. Shockingly, they have seized, I can say, a vehicle, one, uh, among the vehicles they have seized, is a vehicle that you acquired through parliament in 2011 when he came as a member of parliament the first time, a vehicle that he acquired because during that time he was also privileged to be appointed as deputy minister, and the law provided that the personal to order vehicle at the end of your tour of duty, you can buy. And he bought a Prado. When he came back as member of parliament in 2016, he bought another vehicle through parliament, a GX, 
a VX, which is one of those that I have seized. At that particular time, through Secretary to the Cabinet, uh, Dr. Msiska, there was uh, a change of uh, 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 regulations or law that ministers will no longer or civil servants no longer be buying those personal to order vehicles. But a special purpose vehicle was established, a microfin, to which civil servants as well as the ministers and deputy ministers would go and obtain a loan to buy a, you know, a vehicle. And therefore, one of the vehicles I've seized, which is still registered in the name of the works and supply that he acquired, is also one of those that I've seized. An Arion for his wife and a vehicle for his sister. The only thing that they have attempted to do to centralize this whole arrangement by saying that there are so many vehicles at the residence to try and woodwink gullible citizens to think that there's something fishy. They even now re report and say, we even got stones. The shocking thing is that the stones they were... <laughs> the stones they got are decorative stones. Wapanga ko kamo kakwati urewa misha komi adero wasenda ayama we tu shita femu street for him he got them here at Skale and they are you can go to Skale you find them even outside their display these no these are not uh, minerals this is just limestone if you like it is in different colors white you know gray and in some cases brown and we use them for decoration na ina wina. Unfortunately, that is what we are being subjected to. When Mr. Aka in the HDMA says, if I had not acquired education, possibly I would have been so primitive that I would have married then. Maybe the degree of primitivity may have reduced in the area of marriage. But like we have said, this that is going on in this country would do too. And you know a leader ultimately produces his own kind. When you have a leader that is inclined towards prospering the citizens, they encourage hard work. They encourage those who have done something for themselves to inspire others. Honorable Musuka is supposed to be an example of those who have done something you know, of their own outside their service to the nation as minister, service to the nation as uh, you know, a civil servant at some point, service to the nation as a union leader. All this put together plus entrepreneurial activities is supposed to inspire others. He lives a quiet life. We all know. Actually the people that would defend Rubo Musukwa on these are people who live with him in Chidabombo because they know his track record. The people of Copa Belt know on Rubo Musukwa. And all of us, his colleagues, have been drawing wisdom from him on how we can succeed by doubling you are an entrepreneur and also service to your community. That's the greatest thing that maybe on Mumsuko has committed. And it is the ability to look after property. Because some of the people who acquired vehicles in 2011, by this time they are Rex. Those who acquired vehicles in 2016, by this time they are Rex. Polisha from 2011 up to today, the vehicles still look in good condition. Ebo afya wa musuka wa kwete ino nchita. Nombo vutu tukwa isako mwenye don. Ebo wevo leleta this kind of situation. It's very unfortunate and we attempted to comment so that the Zambian people are not would win. If there was anything wrong that could have been done by him, would have possibly been the first ones to raise those issues. Thank you very much and good day.